When it comes to movies, one of my favorite themes is those that involve time manipulation such as time travel, time dilation, and those that are alike. Mainly because I get a feeling of what just happened? Or the oh, so that's how it just happened. You know, that sort of stuff. Now I am here to talk about some of the films that I watched and let's try to understand the context of the plot and time manipulation as easy as possible for you and me to comprehend. In this two part series, I will note 6 movies which 3 of them obviously that I will talk about in every part. So let us get started. Let's start with a simple time travel movie concept. Interstellar from 2014. This film is one of my all time favorite movies because, in my opinion, this is a complete package for me. There is action, there is a stake. I figured out the message. One word. Know what it is? Stay. Very big in stake indeed, as the whole of humanity depends on our protagonist, Mr. Cooper. There is also a conflict, and there is a good conclusion. You pretty much get a point. In terms of the time traveling aspect, our main characters in the ship are all experiencing time dilation. To put it simply, time dilation is a phenomenon where a subject has a different perception of the time relative to the observer, mainly due to the subject's speed or the gravitational influence. Or in the nutshell, the faster you move in space, the slower you move in time. The film shows a good example of this phenomenon, which in the scene of the first planet, you know, the all water one with a very big tidal wave. For every hour that has passed in that planet, on Earth, however, that hour is equal to 7 years. With the evidence of their third crew, who stayed on the spaceship, waited for 23 years, 4 months, and 8 days. We can also see the effects of the time dilation, another example in the ending of the movie, as you can see. The second on our list, the Back to the Future trilogy. Again, these films are some of my favorites of all time. The reason being that I can understand the plot well, and maybe some parts may require some rewatch, but overall, the trilogy is such a fun movie to watch. So, if you haven't seen the franchise, watch it all from parts 1 all the way to 3. Now to the concept of time travel, in my understanding of the series, Marty McFly and Dr. Emmett Brown are essentially traveling through time in both past or future. And when they went to the past doing something, they are essentially creating a new timeline or universe with the effects of what they did. There is a complete timeline of events I think in the wiki of this franchise on the internet but for the sake of all our understanding and simplicity I'll explain these events of the film that they use the time machine and my own description of the effects that the protagonists do in the sense of causality using an understandable diagram. Hopefully you will be able to understand it all, my dear viewers. And side note, I will be calling the time machine the DeLorean. Because, yeah, it's a DeLorean. Anyways, let's go to the timeline. First, the DeLorean was used by Dr. Brown on his dog. 
Einstein by traveling by a minute and well nothing much happened since it's their first test of the DeLorean and the dog just went back by a minute the second use of the DeLorean was by Marty when he accidentally went to 1955 mainly to escape the terrorists but also to save Dr. Brown from his doomed fate in that current year 1985. Now some things have happened here changing the personality of both Marty's parents and also saving Dr. Brown essentially creating a new timeline different from the previous 1985. After going back to the new and current 1985, Dr. Brown together with McFly and Jennifer went into the year 2015 to fix a problem involving their kids. Now this is the one issue that I have a problem with in my opinion because even when they change something in the future, when they go back to the present 1985, it will still change on their own choices in that present. Well, I digress. Moving on. Now, after the fourth time that they used the DeLorean, the old future Biff went back to 1955 to give his younger self an almanac with every result of sports betting, which effectively changed his future. With the old Biff changed his past, he will no longer exist in the future, therefore creating a ripple effect and also creating a new timeline again. By the way, a good example of that ripple effect that Dr. Brown mentioned is the gradual change of the photograph of Marty and his siblings in the film, in case if you don't know that ripple effect. And because of that, as Marty goes back to the, another new 1985, Beef becomes a rich guy and also super bad one. Because of that, Marty went back again to 1955 to get back the almanac from the younger Beef. Eventually, reverting all the changes made from the timeline. Before we went to the third film of the franchise, I think we currently have seven timelines and the last one next. So let's go to the third part of the franchise. The third film in the franchise is basically simple in terms of time travel aspect. Since they only find a way to make the DeLorean work again to travel back to the future. And yes, pun absolutely intended. The film also shows the ripple effect again when they use the photo of the tombstone of the present Dr. Brown stuck in the year 1885 that Marty has throughout the film. The plot is plain simple, amazing, and the conclusion is pretty decent in my opinion. And yes, I do recommend again for you everyone to watch Back to the Future Parts 1 to 3 if you haven't. Next movie is Looper. Looper is a film from 2012 and it is directed by... Wait. Is this the guy who created this piece of- I bypassed the compressor. The film is directed by Ryan Johnson and the protagonists played by Mr. Arthur and John McClane as younger and older Joe. Again, for you to understand the timeline of this film, I'm going to include some plot in the film, obviously, so go watch the movie if you have it. Now, again, in my understanding, the entire plot movie has different timelines or possibilities, so to speak. And we will explain that later, so don't worry. Let's start with the basic. Joe explains in the introduction that the group he was in 
is a criminal organization or a mob and they are sending people from the future to the present to be assassinated by a looper which are the likes of Joe. Mostly their old selves are being sent back to the past or the present time of the younger Joe to leave no trace of the members of their organization and tying up loose ends or closing the loop. The timeline of this film spans from 2044 to 2074, wherein the latter year only has the time machine where the targets from that year are sent and killed by loopers. We've also seen the young set getting mutilated which affects his future self and we can't know for sure if he died or not since the future leader mob guy said to Joe, the younger Joe, that he can kill him since it will affect the future. Alright, from what I understand here, future Abe or the mob guy boss doesn't want to change the future that he knows about. Remember when future Abe insisted to young Joe that he should go to China rather than London? Remember that scene? Well, that's what I'm talking about. Before I go off track, here is the first timeline of the film, which we will call this as the main looping timeline. In here, the young Joe killed his future self in the year 2044 or the present time. Then, at that point, young Joe proceeds to live his normal life and went to China to retire instead of France, which, as we know earlier, the future mob boss guy Abe said. Then, in the year 2074, 30 years at which our present Joe becomes now the old Joe, gets kidnapped by the mob and also killed his partner which drives his motives to change the past that involves killing the Rainmaker or the kid named Sid whom the future Joe and the boys suppose is the mastermind behind all the killings of these loopers. In timeline 1 at some point Sid's mother Sarah is killed which we don't know what is the cost also resulting in this timeline where Sid becomes the Rainmaker. So we are done with timeline 1, let's start with the timeline 2. Timeline 2 in my opinion is pretty short where this timeline is when the old Joe went to the past just like timeline 1 but this timeline shows where the old Joe kills Sid's mother, Sarah, which has an effect also of Sid becoming the Rainmaker in the year 2074. And lastly, the third timeline that we know about, where young Joe shoots himself to death, making the old Joe non-existent in the future, effectively making him disappear before he shoots Sarah. Thus, Sid doesn't become the Rainmaker in the future. Now, 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 you may be questioning yourself again. Why did he shot himself? Why, why, why? Well, one thing that comes to our mind is the second timeline that I talked about earlier, where old Joe shoots Sarah, making Sid the Rainmaker. Another reason, in my opinion, is throughout the whole film, Young Joe star gets to be killed by him where only his older self. And the outcome of that always resort to Sid becoming Rainmaker. Even though he shoots the old Joe after the old Joe killed Sarah, the loop will never be closed resulting again in the Rainmaker and Young Joe will wait again until 2074 to go back in time and kill the Rainmaker. Well, you get the point. Another question you might think is, why does the Rainmaker want to eradicate all the loopers in the future? Well, in my opinion again, I think it is due to the use of the time machine in that future. The Rainmaker surely does know that some old loopers will use it to change the past which young joe or the 
future himself already does. Well, again, if you haven't watched the films that I listed on this video, definitely check it out if you have some spare time. Part 2 will come soon. So soon. So, if you want to see it, well, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Consider helping me out. And I really appreciate it and it will absolutely definitely make me more determined and motivated to make these related videos for you. Now enough with my pleading talk and well, I will see you guys next time. See ya!